Anyway, uh, any other questions before we get into the, the meat and potatoes? Well, I have a, a whole slew of things I want to try, but you should finish with the meat. Okay. <laughs> so, I hope you guys enjoyed your Caesar salad. <laughs> okay, it's a chicken Caesar. It was a chicken Caesar salad. Let's now really get into the meat and potatoes. And uh, this is what really excites me is because I'm going to talk about some really cool stuff that you can do with Media Front that, a lot of, that most people don't even know about because I've never had a medium to actually talk about it. Um, the first thing I, I really want to get into is, um, is just the, the code base um, behind Media Front. Um, every, anybody can, can go um, to GitHub. All of this is, um, all of this is, is open source, so you can actually look at, wow, squatters. Um, so all of this is exposed through GitHub, open source, and here's the code base behind, behind MediaFront. Now, this isn't the module. I'm not really going to talk about the module here. I want to talk about the media player and its architecture. The module is actually fairly simple, um, as it should be, which is also a change from 1.0 to 2.0, where the module was just horrific um, that controlled the, the player. Now the module is just kind of stupid. It's just like... It really just manages the presets and manages, it's really the widget is where all the power is. Now, the first thing that I want to mention is whenever I re-architected this, I, I, I wanted to take, take the lessons that I've learned from the original media front or open standard media player and basically just say, you know what, I've learned these lessons, I want to correct that. The first lesson was is I tried to cram everything into a single JavaScript library. And when really a better pattern is to create a framework, to create a very bare bones, minimalistic framework. And from that, that is what becomes your core. Um, Drupal's trying to do this right now. It's, it's becoming kind of like this whole framework pattern where you make the core as tiny as possible but you make it flexible so that people can add plugins, and then every feature is just an additional plugin. So what I did is I actually built, my very first task was to build a minimalistic media player called MinPlayer. And you actually don't go to MediaFront to do this. I did this in my own GitHub profile, which is Travis T, and it's just called MinPlayer. And I call it MinPlayer because it is minimalistic. This is the core this is the core media player for everything you saw there. All this does is it gives you the absolute minimal of what, okay, it provides the minimal of what 90% of people want. That's the best way to explain this. It's a simple media player. It provides the, the um, play loader overlay. It provides a control bar, and that's it. It also, it also abstracts all the players such as YouTube, Vimeo, and um, Flash, and HTML5. All of the source is that you'll, for this player is in the SRC folder, the source folder. This is a compiled JavaScript library, which means it has a make file. So if you actually want to develop and write plugins, all you have to do is learn how this make file works. You just type make, and it will it'll just compile it, and it'll throw the, the result in this bin folder, which becomes a, an aggregate file and a compressed file. <clears throat> the point is, is where you need to look is in source. In here, you'll see what the core for MediaFront is. And really, it all begins with Media Player plugin. This is the base class for, me, for MediaFront. It's where every single thing derives from. This is going to be, this is kind of hard to read and it's probably a lot to digest. In fact, let me, let me actually. Um, so this, this, is, this is quite a bit to read. It's uh, JavaScript object oriented, which is, if it, for any of you who are not, um, who have written object oriented in other languages, it's a little bizarre because you, you're dealing with this prototype and, but all you have to know is every single plugin within MediaFront derives from this class. Unless it is just a helper class, which there are some helper classes, but anything like a playlist, 
the actual media player is a plugin, the controller, all of this, everything is a, is a plugin. There is a single API that is exposed to you that allows you to get anything within MediaFront, any plugin, and it is called MinPlayerGet. This is the only API that you really need to know. You can get every single plugin from anywhere using MinPlayerGet. And it's also asynchronous, meaning you can call MinPlayerGet before the plugin even exists. And once the plugin comes to life and is ready, MinPlayer will get will hand that that plugin to you. So it's it's a it's a it's it's kind of like dependency injection, but it's done a little bit differently. So it's 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 very job it's a JavaScripty way of doing dependency injection. So so this is all you need to know, and it takes three different arguments: MinPlayer get ID plugin callback. ID is the ID of the widget. Plugin is the name of the plugin. And callback is if you want the plugin when it's ready. If you don't care, if you just want that plugin and you want it immediately, you just don't don't include a callback. But if you want that when that plugin is ready to take event handling, you give it a callback. And the only argument in that callback is the actual plugin object. Which means there are nine, because there's three different arguments, there's nine different ways that this thing, or eight different ways this thing these thing can use. And I've 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 documented all those ways. So if you want, for example, if you do if you, if you provide null, null, one, I basically assume that you want all plugins from all players, but only when they're ready. Like if you just provide a callback, that'll, that'll literally hand you every single plugin that is registered, and it'll hand them to you whenever they're ready. Now, whenever I say plugins, I'm talking about the media player, I'm talking about the playlist, I'm talking about the control bar, I'm talking about the playloader. So you only do, you only do this is if, you, if you want to affect every play, plugin in the entire system. So here is the, this is the API that you need to know. Going back to the source code, everything derives from plugin. The first one being display. So display is what brings in the JavaScript aspects and, and establishes all of the elements within J, uh, J, uh, jQuery. So it'll, it'll do like the jQuery. And then, then from there you have the regular plugin, so every single media player derives from media player base. That is the base class for all the players. And then you have Flash, HTML, Media Player, Vimeo, YouTube, all of those. Here's the play loader, which is that little overlay with the big play button. Um, image is like an image class that does all the image handling. Point is, it's object oriented. It's really clean, really nice, very minimalistic. All you need to know from that is this is the core media player. Now, the open standard media player, what you actually saw in my demo was called the open standard media player. I built it as an extension to the core player. I did not want to fluff the, the core player. In fact, no more features will go into this thing. Min player will stay put and it will just become more rock solid. Everything else, all the fluff that you see, the playlist is fluff. Um, in fact, I think that's the big one, just the playlist is the big fluff item in, but, but like add support. Um, uh, my next, my ne next objective, ad objective is closed captions. All of those, which actually closed captions should probably go on the min player. Um, <clears throat> OSM player. Now, min media front OSM player is where you'll see the co source code for <coughs> the media front module. You'll notice that the source OSM player.js, it derives from the core player. So it is just a simple extension on top of it, and it brings in all the other plugins. OSM player also has the concept of node, which I, I, I stole this from Drupal. It means the same thing. It is an encapsulated, it's an encapsulation of metadata around a piece of, around a media item. It's a node. It's a. It's just an encapsulated like title description, but that that you're going to find in OSM player. I'm not going to go into any more detail other than that. Play uh, the playlist is also it derives from plugin, and here are all the parsers. Remember uh, whenever I say, "Hey, the YouTube parser that brings in the YouTube feed." That's it. It's 70 lines of code. So that's where like, Vimeo will get added and all that. That's where Vimeo will get added. And basically all this is, is here I'm parsing the items and I'm putting it into a format that I understand. 
That's all you do. So it's, it'll be real easy to bring in other playlist providers. That's all I'm going to talk about as far as the core is concerned. It's object oriented, it's really clean, it's really nice, and it's been built so that anybody can extend it. Because, because it's object oriented, you could build a class that is the suit that is the that is a like a, a wrapper class around the base class, and then you suddenly have full control over that object. And a great example of that is how I built the template system. Templates are simply derived classes that derive from the, the open center media player. So if you go to templates and you go to default, it has a JS file. You'll, you'll see here, I, all these are are classes that have a base class, which is the open standard media player. So I can just click on, I can click on this, which is the default. And it simply just derives from the OSM player. And that's how you build a, that's how you build a template. And then at that point, all you have to do is build um, provide your elements. I'm actually going to do this whenever we create a custom template, which is what I'm going to go into now. So now that I've kind of gone over the architecture, which I, I feel like I'm getting glazed eyeballs at this point. Let's build a template. 